Hello there. Welcome back to Cinema Flix Music Picks as I put on the old microphone. You may notice a bar here and a bar here. I don't know if uh, any of you saw a particular, I can't even remember what one it was. There was a video in which explains <clears throat> the old Apple device ain't working too hot. So I took it to the geniuses and they said, we'll have it fixed in a couple of days. The geniuses have failed. So they can't get the YouTube app to work and just record straight to YouTube. So I'm now zooming it. Who's zooming who? Rita Franklin. Um, and uploading the Zoom video. So you'll get these wonderful bars and you may see me having to go <laughs> and you might see me jump in at the start of the video going, oh, I'm recording. And at the end having to go. <laughs> so, you know, basically the quality of the video is probably going to go down and that's, that's saying something, isn't it? Fuck a duck. So we're here to review the new Stephen Stills. Look, there's Stephen Stills there on my chest. Is <clears> that <throat> your own joke? Um, especially after yesterday's video. Live at Berkeley 1971. Now, when this was announced, announced, when it popped up on Amazon, I thought, ah, that's just one of those grey market, not bootlegs, but they're, you know, half and half, you know, they're something that's fallen out of copyright or it's been a radio FM broadcast so the, the artist doesn't own it, but now it's in the public domain because of the time. That's why you get so many 50th anniversary editions of things, folks. It's not because they're being nice to you, it's because of copyright laws. Um, this is a legit album, though. This is endorsed by Stills, put out by, by Omnivore Recordings, who released wonderful big star stuff so support omnivore they released that wonderful chris bell box set and things so this is fully endorsed by steve stills and his family um and it comes with a little hype sticker saying previously unissued 1971 live album featuring duets with david crosby obviously anybody's seen my rather emo video when crosby passed away will know that's a selling point for me alone but so is just any Stills. I've got every Steve Stills record. I think I've got every Crosby, Stills and Nash related album. And obviously Young, as you know, didn't know from the channel, where Chris can go a month without me doing new Young videos. Um, so this is from the 1971 tour. So it's from August the 21st and 22nd in Berkeley, California. And it was towards the end of the tour. Stills had suffered a back injury and worried that he was not performing to his peak abilities. So Cross kind of helped. A bit, oddly enough, a bit like Neil Young's Time Fades Away tour, when Neil, was, uh, Neil damaged his throat and uh, asked Crosby and Nash to, to help him in the last few dates of that. So Cross is always a good ringer to throw in there. However, in this case, still was needn't have worried. He's absolutely phenomenal here. This is sensational. So the headline is, buy this, folks. If you love Steve Stills, this is not just his best live album now. Not much competition, but this isn't just his best live album. It's one of his best albums. Um, so he's got the Stephen Stills Live from 1976, which was recorded from 74, not his peak stuff. Um, that was into his more indulgent periods um, and some vices had really taken hold by then. Um, and then decades later, the wonderful, but you know, not peak era, uh, Shepherd's Bush 2007, um, which I saw him in that too. So this is essentially the Stills album that we've all always wanted, finally, um, peak era. It's right after Stills 2. So he's coming off the run of Crosby, Stills, Nash, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young Deja Vu, Stills 1 and Stills 2. And then this. And he's just about to go into the studio about a month after this to start recording Manassas. So we're talking real peak era Steve Stills here. This is essential stuff. The concert itself, though, and it's all very well saying that, but like Neil showed with the bootleg series, that I'm 
I defended this because, again, it's, it's the bootleg series, but so many fans really, they obviously don't keep up with things and casual fans shouldn't be expected to know the difference between a bootleg series and a performance series because this has got bad sound quality, but it's a, a historic gig. None of that need worry you here. This is one of the best sounding live recordings I've heard in a long, long time. Exactly how I like my live recordings. Exactly how I like them. There's a, enough of Steve Stills' voice, perfectly clear, but his guitar is perfect in the mix as well. It is exactly where you want it to be, where you can hear every strum, you can hear every bit of picking. You can hear you can hear the the sound echoing around the body of the guitar. You can hear the fret sometimes. The audience they're mixed perfectly. When you want to know that the audience were exciting, excited because he's doing one of the big hits, you get that punch. You can hear the way, but they're not interrupting things, so they don't get in the way when you don't want them to. It's brilliant. So it's exactly perfect sound quality. I'll stick a couple of tracks down below for you to, to check out. Um, kicks off, as did indeed his first solo record, which if you haven't heard, just Stephen Stills. Um, wow. Hear that record. It's the only album ever, not that there was much time to do this, but the only album that featured Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix as an actual album rather than just a compilation of So you had Clapton, Hendrix and Stills playing guitar on that record. That'll do. Um, so it's a phenomenal version of Love the One You're With. Um, the original obviously was quite upbeat as it was, but this is even faster. Um, at this stage, it's clear that everybody knows that's his major hit and they're all, you know, hey, when he starts singing it and he just comes out and batters into it. So it's very much... Uh, Richie Haven's Woodstock kind of guitar playing rather than rather than it's very much boom 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 battering battering that guitar um, into submission. It's a wonder the strings aren't just ripped to shreds or fingers aren't. It's it's brilliant stuff. He's he's using the guitar very percussively in a few tracks. So Love the One You're With is a perfect barnstorming way to open it up. But then you go into like, Do For The Others. It's sensational. It slows it right down. And it's, it's such a lovely contrast. You think, oh, Brian, he's going to do an actual, and you can tell if you just look at the track list, but he's going to be doing Stills 1, Stills 2, and a couple of couple of classics from, from CSN and, and one from Buffalo Springfield. Can you guess which one? Um, but then it goes into Jesus Gave Love Away for Free. And that's an unreleased song at this point that nobody would have known because he was going to record it with Manassas in a month's time, or a couple of months' time, depending on what point in the sessions it was done. Um, and it was on this tour that he met Chris Hillman and had the idea to form Manassas, do an actual band where he would become the leader. So it's still his project, but he's very much the leader. Um, and interestingly, Manassas is kind of all over this, kind of all over this spiritually, because you can hear stills not wanting to be any one thing. You can hear the country stills, the blues stills, the gospel stills, the singer-songwriter stills, just like Manassas has those four sides and they're all dedicated to one type of music. That's here. That is exactly here. But he's doing it in the middle of songs or he's doing it... Um, you know, track by track, depending on, on where he goes. Out next comes David Crosby, and he does You Don't Have to Cry, um, which obviously was on the CSN debut, which was only two years before this. But they've all done so much at this stage that, wow. Um, and then does the Lee Shore Crosby original, which was homeless for a long time. It was only on the live record, Four Way Streets, until the CSN box set in 1991. Um, Great to hear two more cross tracks, absolutely phenomenal. Um, he sounds great. Um, you can hear Stills is very shy, um, even though not in person with his friends, it was, you know, Steve Stills. Um, but in public, on stage with an audience, his banter, even just introducing Crosby, is so nervous, so nervous, it's not real. Um, yeah, you can see why you kind of needed Cross and Nash in that foursome because Neil and, and Stills could often be quite. Mm. Uh, and then we go into Word Game, which is one of his more 
I mean, it's a bluesy track, but it's one of his more everlasting songs, really, in Evergreen, because that would be on the 74 tour and therefore the 76 live record. Stayed in the set list for solo tours, and he re-recorded it with The Raids in 2015, the supergroup that hardly anybody knows about that still was formed with Kenny Wayne Shepherd. They did two albums, and nobody remembers that Steve Stills and Kenny Wayne Shepherd had a group together in the 2010s. It's nuts. Um, so bluesy as hell stuff like Sugar Babe Follows, and then you get a medley of 49 bye-byes and For What It's Worth. Oh, mama, that might be the thing I put down below. 49 Bye Bye is one of my favourite CSN tracks. I did a, a video with my good buddy Jamie on the channel where we went through our favourite CSN tracks, and that's one I picked. Um, 49 Reasons on and I love that track. Um, and what this does is reinvents it as a thumping piano, almost Blueberry Hill type Fats Domino thing. And that works so well. Steady gun, be my world. Brilliant stuff. And that segues straight into the, med the melody changes a little bit. There's something happening here. You can almost hear the audience going, he's doing for what it's worth as a piano gospel track. But it is ain't exactly clear. Woo! Little Richard all of a sudden. Brilliant. So you're losing the, the, the classic guitar part of the, you know, down, down, there's something happening. And you're instead getting this, there's something happening here. I think it's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. It's like, whoa. When did this become a gospel song? Well, here is when it became a gospel song. It's brilliant. It's fantastic. Link below, if I remember. Black Queen's up next that, from his solo debut. Slows it right down again, which you needed to do after that, that absolute barn stormer. Um, and you'd think, Black Queen, very bluesy track. What's up after something like that? Well, of course, a country rock banjo ballad straight out of the Dillard's kind of style, um, which, you know, Clark and Dillard or something. And uh, No, You've Got to Run. A banjo-led version of that. Brilliant. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. And Stills is having a blast. You can hear that he's really enjoying reinventing tracks, doing some as guitar showcases, where he's really finger-picking and really saying, look what I can do. And some tracks he is doing that Richie Havens thing. Not that Richie. You, you know what I mean? The strumming. Okay, right. Um, and then the horns come out, and this horn, this uh, this tour was indeed the Memphis Horns tour, but they're not on as much of the tour as you'd think, or, and they're certainly not on as much of the album as you'd think. So they come out for Bluebird Revisited, um, which although it was on Stills 2, was written as early as 69, they did it at Woodstock, um, and that's phenomenal. What they add is just this, again, very Manassas kind of idea where everything can change from one track to the next. Um, and I have to call, there was a review online of this and uh, somebody said, and of course, Stills was always someone who enjoyed doing a good cover version, like his cover of Everybody's Talking by Harry Nilsson. Here he does a cover of Al Green's uh, legendary, legendary Lean On Me. And I emailed the person and said, hi, who, first of all, but whether it's steadily on me, and second of all, it's not the same song. You didn't listen to the album, you lying fuck pig. Fucking hell. You f <sighs> don't cheat. Don't lie. All you need to do is listen to a bloody record and say if it's good or not. It's not difficult. Jesus Christ, if I can do it, anybody can. Um, Lean On Me, yes, it has the same name as the Bill Withers song, not an Al Green song, but it's actually written by uh, the guys in the Memphis Horns, um, Wayne Jackson and Andrew Love. It's a composition by, by the band, and Stills does sing on it, but believe me, it is nothing like Lean On Me When You're Not Strong. It's a stomping James Brown-like track. Oh, gosh. Imagine, imagine being that lazy. That lazy that you just look at the track list and assume that it must be a cover version. 
Cherokee, the song that he wrote for Rita Coolidge follows that. Then you get band introductions where that's about five minutes long, believe it or not, where still very, very painfully introduces everybody one by one. And oh, he's so nervous, but it's so charming at the same time to hear still so vulnerable because he, you know, he admits he wasn't the most easy to work with person at this point. Um, but in public, he's very vulnerable, he doesn't really know how to face the audience. So for him introducing the band, it's quite it's quite, oh, bless him. Um, he's clearly very much in favour with uh, with Dallas at this point. Dallas Taylor, who was on the Crosby, Stills and Nash um, first two records and would be in Manassas and would be very much not in Manassas. And <laughs> the, a friendship that went like this. Um, so at this point, he's very much friends with uh, with Dallas. He calls him his brother and says, like most brothers, we do have the occasional argument. So even then, you're recognising that, hey, uh, Fuzzy Samuels is on bass. So your rhythm section on this record is essentially a rhythm section from Deja Vu. That'll do. Um, as well as, as mentioned, the Memphis Horns, um, Jack Hale, Roger Holtz, Wayne Jackson, Andrew Love, Floyd Newman, that's your horn section. Um, but then uh, Steve Fromholz is on guitar and backing vocals. Sidney George is on alto sax and flute. He stays the whole time, not just for the for the horn section parts. Paul Harris does some organ playing, and Joe Lala is on congas and percussion. Um, kind of backing Dallas Taylor, if you like. Um, the record itself, this was mastered by Chris Bellman at Bernie Grunman Mastering, so that. That, for any audio fail, tells you what kind of quality you're getting in this recording. It is 100% top quality stuff. The photos are by Henry Diltz, who did the album cover for, for uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash and Deja Vu. So, you know, it's his photography at the shows. Yeah. Phenomenal stuff. And some some liner notes. We won't be able to read them, but... Uh, Regardless, just gives you a bit of a not as interesting history as the one I gave you, frankly. Yeah, but it's by Howie Edelson, New York, New York City, December 2022. So if you only take one thing away from this video, it's that this is the Steve Stills record that your collection needs. Um, you need Steve Stills in total, the essentials, Steve Stills, Manassas, I wouldn't even necessarily say Stills 2 now that we've got this, because some of the tracks here are better, but I'll throw it in. Stills 1, Stills 2, Manassas, I Love Stills Alone, and then this, really. That's that's the best of Stills solo. I'm not putting anything else down, because um, I do like um, a lot of his stuff. I love, I've got it all, and I love most of it, but as a more casual fan, that's where I'd go. His first two solo records, Manassas, this. This is brilliant. It's the live record that I wish would have had all this time, but isn't it great that we've now just finally got it? So can't say fairer than that. So pick it up. 110% guarantee you will love it if you're a Stills fan. If you're not a fan of Stills, you probably won't get on with it. What can I say, as usual? Um, but we'll leave it there, folks. And now I'll do the, this thing. We'll have to start the video and upload it to a cloud now. I usually just say it's a card, but now I'm going to upload it to a cloud. So anyway, thank you very much. Stay very safe out there. Pick this up. Check the track below. Let me know what you think of it. And as always, love and indeed, mercy.